Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this session. My name is Chao Yang. I'm a director of data at Wu McKenzie. Today, I will join Yang Yang Wu, the VP of uh, data, uh, data at Wu McKenzie, to show you guys some of our recent work in bridging the completeness of big data on data bricks. So uh, we have felt a pattern on this work. And also, we want to thank our co-inventors, Bernard, Hugh, Rodri, and Wu McKenzie for this work. So first, we, we will start with high-level overview of our user case and also the limitations of existing method we encountered and the overview of our data pipeline. Then we will move to detailed implementation and we will share you guys some source code of major steps of this process. At the end, we will share you guys some tips uh, we learned from this project. So let's start with why we started this work. So as we all know, now value exists in almost all data sites. It's unavoidable. And, but a lot of time we're just not able to afford to throw them away and either our data size is limited or those data is part of a key attribute. Also on the machine learning model, they don't like uh, null value very well and doesn't work with data with null value. So that's why we started this piece of data. So a woman can say we are uh, explain all your guys' data. We have a broad coverage from conventional and conventional subservice. Also, we have a strong focus in power and renewable. So we have a, our own data platform called Lens, which can be integrated to client systems seamlessly through API services. So you know, the one the, the part of the work is we want to improve our data quality so the client can get the better data from our Lens platform. So before this project, we tried all the major popular uh, filling methods and uh, like I work over filling, filling with fixed values or using statistic metrics like a mean, max, minimum. So one thing we discovered is those methods didn't give very good accuracy. So I think because they are isolated, that means we didn't consider other attributes, only focus on one attribute at a time. So they, they ignore the relationship or association within attributes. Also, this, those methods are kind of time consuming when you have a big data size. So also at this point, you guys probably can see a survey on your screen. It would be great if you can share the method of idea you have been using to fill mouse. Uh, thanks. So this is a high level overview of our data pipeline. So we all our data are stored on AWS S3 in parquet format. Then first we use Apache Sendona to do a spatial neighbor discovery. And at this step, we can fill majority of the mouse by leveraging the neighbor information. Then only now we didn't fill uh, during this step, we will pass to the next step, which we use a Spark ML library to build our models. And then this AI model will fill the, the non-field nodes from step one. Then we will, in the meantime, we use ML flow to to model management and deployment. And at the end, we push our data to the Lens uh, platform and the client will be able to query the data directly. But let's start with neighbor discovery. So on the right, you can see a visualization for our deep view uh, platform, which is a tool to display uh, oil well in 3D. So um, in this case, each line represents one oil well. And the goal of this work is try to discover all the neighbors and the distance between wells. So one of the challenges we had, the major challenge we had was first the data size was too big. So we in this data set, we have about 314,000 wells and each well hides more than 100 data points. There's a lot of data and the compute time is, was very long on the regular single machine, but a lot of time we couldn't even finish the work because uh, we, we, we run out of memory. So then we start using Apache Sendona, which is also called a GeoSpark. So it's, it's a distributed framework to, uh, for processing big uh, spatial data. So one of the main algorithms we use here is a KDB tree, which is a geometric approach. Basically, it subsequently divides data into n-dimensional space, and it builds a tree structure, and we can query data points based on distance very fast. So this is a snapshot of our uh, sample, our our code for the geo, uh, for the Sandona part. So one of the things we, we need to do for first thing is a set, set up a special Spark context and then register the Spark context uh, to the geo uh, geo Spark SQL engine. Then we start loading our data. So for after loading the data, we need to create a geometry column, object column. So out here we use lat lat latitude and longitude 
So it's a point object. Then we convert this uh, this uh, data side to a spatial RDD. Uh, and in the meantime, we all need to create a circular RDD. So the circular RDD is basically we're drawing a circle around a point with, uh, with given radius. So the, after we create both RDDs, we start doing data partition by using KDD tree. Then we perform a distance drawing. So this drawing basically we put a circular RDD and a point RDD together, and a point falls inside the circle where we can see the neighbor. At the end, we can convert those RDD back to data frame for easy processing. So this is some simplified uh, output of our data set. So on the left, the left geometry, which represents one well, um, you can see uh, on the left geometry is uh, all the nearby wells. And also we have distance around that uh, between them. So at this step, we, we can leverage the neighbor information to start filling the null values. So we tried to average weighted average regression models. And we found out the weighted average uh, is very good uh, result. So anything we didn't fill here, we were pass the data to the next step. It's using a collaborative AI model to fill it. Thanks, Chao, for covering the earlier portion. As Chao mentioned, uh, the first step, uh, we're using uh, GeoSpark, uh, discovering the neighbor information to fill the nouns with the neighbor info information. And then because of there's a, a constraint uh, distance that you can use for search the neighbors, so there's after the first step, there's still some uh, null value is not filled. So we pass on uh, those uh, information to uh, the second step, which is using collaborative AI to fill the nouns, uh, rest of the nouns. And then this is actually, it's not a new methodology. We leverage a popular method, uh, collaborative filtering AI for uh, movie recommendations or some recommendations. People do that all the time. Um, the, the, the one the model that we use, uh, leverage is called ALS. Alternating list squares model from Spark ML Lib. If you uh, go through this link that we provided, they have code samples on how to use that library. Um, by leveraging that uh, existing uh, Spark uh, ML Lib library, that saves us a lot of time and effort. Uh, but using that model, uh, we have to map to the uh, data format that required by the model inputs. In this model, they have uh, three uh, columns you have to shape your data to. One is user ID, which is corresponding to object or object group ID. And then the item, in this case, we map the attribute names to those item names. And then uh, the last one is the rating. Basically, we converted attribute value as rating. And then uh, if you everybody remember their linear algebra class, actually fundamentals for uh, those recommender system is Singular value decomposition that I illustrated conceptually on the bottom of this page. This is the screenshot of the code we use for using a collaborative AI and by leveraging a uh, Spark ML Lib um, ALS um, uh, model to uh, fill the nouns. So the first step we did is actually um, is just to set up the ML Lib um, ML pipeline. So in this case, uh, we, we call the ALS a model as the uh, first stage. And then what we found out that uh, it doesn't matter if you normalize or not normalize the value. So that's the reason that we don't have other stages uh, in this pipeline, which is very simplified uh, version. And then uh, the second step is uh, you have to step specify your evaluator. In this case, we use a regression evaluator. And then in order to, for us to optimize the model, we use a grid search uh, to search the parameter uh, space. And uh, so that's the, uh, the next step. And then the last one is in order to uh, generalize the model to prevent overfitting, um, we use a cross validation uh, for, um, to optimize the parameter. Of course, you can use a hyper opt, uh, you know, those are newer library that we conduct the same um, uh, evaluation or cross validation purpose. Um, but in this case, we use a cost validation. But one thing that we um, didn't get a chance to include here, actually we utilize is, it's very helpful to set, uh, set um, the parallelism uh, parameters in the cost validator. That will help you to save significant amount of uh, training time. Uh, 
as, as we mentioned before, by leveraging the existing uh, ML Leap uh, LS model, the requirement for input data has to be shaped into three columns, which I showed in the bottom um, right um, in, on this uh, slide. So if you if you uh, can take a look up the, the left bottom, uh, the data frame, this is a sample data that we use. Actually, each row representing um, a well ID, and then their parameters such as longitude, latitude, lateral length, and vertical depths. So this is the, the red, regular uh, PySpark data frame format. And then the, the top uh, screenshot, it shows a simple uh, code we use to convert it the left bottom uh, table to the right bottom table. And then the, the code is actually very simple, we just uh, have used a very uh, a for loop to convert it, uh, the data uh, from the left to the right format that required by using LRS model. And then you can see um, after the conversion, uh, the user ID is become the, the object ID is mapping to the user ID. Uh, and then the attribute names is become the item names. And then the attribute values become the ratings. In this work, we have a leverage uh, ML flow um, built inside Databricks for uh, model management and revision control. Uh, if you apologize for low resolution, um, but if you uh, log into Databricks on the left, uh, the, the menu bar, you can find the model, uh, model icon you can click onto and where you can um, find all the models you have trained for each model. And then there's different uh, versions as you can see, the example here is we have 11 versions of a model, and then uh, we specify the version 10 as our production model. And then uh, that's the stage we set for the model model two. And then of course, uh, there's other stages like staging, archive, or get set stage at all. But if you select one of the version of your model to be production model, and then uh, on the lower portion of the slides, you can just call this simple live code to load your production model. So it's very easy uh, to use. And then it's easier for you to control your version, um, to manage the version of your models, as well as retrieve the model when you do a prediction based on the model. As Chao mentioned, um, we have a lens platform and that was the reason that we uh, require us to improve the data completeness and on the right application is, um, is a, showing the 3D uh, wells. And then the, the improved the data sets was feeding the system to view, we call deep view, to view the wells in 3D. And the, the data sets we have, as Chow mentioned before, uh, it's uh, we have 314,000 wells. And each of them has more than 20 attributes with missing values. Uh, the first step, as uh, as Chong mentioned, is a neighbor discovering uh, process, and then with that, uh, we use a GeoSpark to uh, uh, carry out this process, and it takes less than ten minutes to generate 144 million neighbor combinations. It's massive combination, and then without the GeoSpark scenario technology, it's not possible to implement that, and then. Uh, after neighbor discovery information was recovered, was uh, uh, finished, we use the neighbor information to fill the nouns. And then, um, so we, our data sets in this case for this exercise, just for experimental purpose, we had 36% of the data uh, so, you know, on one attributes we call vertical depths has the null value. And then after the, this uh, first step, uh, it neighbor discovery uh, fill the nouns, that now percent reduced to 9.5 percent. Another parameter uh, we started this data sets uh, purposely with 46 7 percent, um, 46 percent uh, now percentage. And after the first step, the now percentage reduced to 14 percent. And then we uh, pass this data to uh, the next step is collaborative AI to fill the nouns. And then um, the as, as after we shape the data, right, it has. 4.7 million uh, records that we used. And then we use 80% as a training and 20% for uh, testing. And then the model takes about uh, four, five minutes to train with a great search and cross validation on Databricks. And then after this step, the now uh, percent reduced to 
And then uh, the error we got from this uh, now fitting process, we're able to measure uh, for the second stage. And then we found out it's about 7% to 18% error for uh, key attributes. So it's very decent results. So our approach, I think is, uh, it's very uh, helpful for uh, field analysis for uh, big data and then with distributed computing. And we want, we would like to share some tips we learned from our exercise. And then of course, as I said, it's a uh, devil is always in detail. So when you implement it, there's uh, something uh, we want to share. We like to share the lessons we learned and hopefully that help you if you want to try out our approach. And then some of the tips you might want to keep in mind. First of all, when, for any AI model, if you want to get a good training result, first of all, you make sure that you remove the outliers in your training data set. Otherwise, uh, the model is not going to be generic enough uh, to uh, uh, provide a good prediction model, uh, prediction data. And also, uh, in our exercise, we did experiment uh, between normalized value and not normalizing, and it turns out there doesn't make any difference. So that, you know, you can keep that in mind, it'll save you some time by not normalizing the data. And also, uh, there's always a lot of noise in the data. In all, in all data sets, is, there's a huge amount of noise in the data. So if you, when you do a uh, collaborative AI to predict your uh, null values, and then if you treat uh, each individual object individually as a, a mapping to the user ID, uh, same as the object ID you have, and then probably um, you know, what you predict is predicting those noise. So in order to deal with noise, what we found a very effective way to do it is to group the object into user uh, or object groups or user ID groups. So in this way that you, know, you can uh, effectively reduce the noise in data and then the predicting or modern results is much better. And also we found out if you have more attributes, the model will lead to a higher accuracy. And then the last one is said is uh, there's due to the accurate, uh, due to the uh, noise in the data. If you want to increase, uh, improve the accuracy from uh, the model, you want to make sure that uh, the, the the noise is dealt properly. And I also found out there are some attributes. For example, even you um, uh, take some uh, measure to reduce the noise, uh, the noise still there. For example, especially the derived attributes. Uh, for example, uh, you know, the, the, the length, the height is uh, independent uh, parameters. Uh, so those are, the model will provide higher accuracy uh, than the other ones. For, for example, the sum of the total depths, right? Or sum of the total lengths. So uh, this is uh, dependent par parameters. They have even higher uh, noise in the data. So the prediction result tends to be lower than the independent attributes. Yeah, we would like to hear from you if you have any questions. Uh, before that, uh, we would like to ask for a favor from you. Hopefully everybody uh, enjoyed the talk and we really hope our talk can inspire a lot of new ideas and new works from you guys. Uh, please provide feedback to, uh, to us and we'd love to hear from you. If you can, please give us the highest ratings uh, for this session. <laughs> of course, our rating is just a number. But most important, as, as, as I said, we would like to hear your thoughts and your ideas and your uh, inspiration from you and what you think that we can do more about this uh, work. And uh, again, uh, back to uh, question, section, uh, question uh, sessions, uh, uh, please feel free to uh, share this question you may have or online to ask, uh, answer your questions. And thank you so much for your time and your attention. Thanks.